Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at the wave equation and the units within it. And also we'll look at the velocity of a wave on a string that has a certain tension T and a certain mass per unit length mu. The equation here, y is a function of x and t, is equal to the amplitude of the oscillation times the cosine or the sine, it doesn't matter which one you use, depends on the initial conditions, of the angle kx minus omega t. Now k is what we call the wave number, which is equal to 2 pi divided by the wavelength, lambda, and omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency of the oscillation. Now here we have a pictorial of that. Notice that this is the wavelength, the distance between two crests on the wave. The position x is in this direction. y is the displacement away from the equilibrium for any point on the string. And then of course v is the velocity of the wave. Now a is the maximum amplitude, so y could be of course anywhere along this path. It could be negative, could be positive between 0 and positive or negative a. So what we're primarily concerned about is the units. So we have A, which is amplitude that has units of meters, times the cosine of this. So what are the units of what's inside here? Well, let's figure it out. So first, let's start with Kx. So Kx, if we look at the units, K is the wave number, which is 2 pi. That's just a constant divided by the wavelength, which is a unit of length. So we end up at 1 over meters. And x is distance in the horizontal direction, which is units of meters as well. And notice that meters divided by meters, that is equal to 1. In other words, this term right here, kx, does not have units. Hmm, that's interesting. Next, we'll try omega t. And it'll become clear in just a moment why this is so. So omega t, omega is 2 pi times the frequency. Now frequency has units of 1 over seconds. So that would be 1 over seconds. And time has units of, well, of seconds, so times seconds. And then again, you can see that the seconds cancel out and then with no units. Wow, how can you have no units? Well, it makes sense because what we want inside a parenthesis, since we're going to take the cosine of that, the cosine of that quantity here, well, that has to be in radians. And as we saw in a previous video, radians is a non-unit. We may write it, but we don't explicitly realize, well, we, ex we realize it explicitly does not have a unit. So the cosine of radian will give us a non-unit answer. So the only unit that we have up here in this part of the equation that survives is the unit of A. And A is, has the units of meters for length, which means that the units on the right side match the units on the left side because Y is also a linear dimension which has units of meters. So we have meters equals meters in our wave equation. Now let's take a look over here. The velocity on a string, well, we expect to have units of meters per second. Let's see if that works out. <clears throat> so if we try to find the units of the square root of tension over the mass per unit length, so we end up with the tension, which is a force, that's newtons, and mass per unit length, well, that would be, mass would be kilograms, and unit length would be meters. So that means, oh, and we have to take the square root of that because it's inside the radical. So when we simplify that a little bit, we end up with newtons times meters divided by kilograms. And we take the square root of that. All right, now we expand the newtons and see what we get. Newtons is going to be kilograms meters per second squared times, we still have meters divided by kilograms, so meters divided by kilograms, and notice now that the kilograms cancel out, that means we're left, and we have to take the square root of that, we're left with meters squared divided by seconds squared, but we still have that square root, because again, we had these underneath the radical. So when we take the square root, we end up indeed with what we were hoping to get, which is meters per second, which are indeed the units of velocity. So you can see here that the equation works just nicely and that the units do match what we're expecting to get in both cases. Displacement in meters equals displacement in meters and velocity in meters per second equals velocity in meters per second. It does work out.